Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everybody. My name is Maya the King, and do you want to hear a joke about construction? I'm still working on it. Now then, today we're taking a look at a game just released called Don't Die in the West, developed and published by Funday Games, released in early access and selling for 12 American dollars. So, what the heck am I looking at here? Well, this game follows the standard Stardew Valley starter pack. Your distant relative dies and leaves you their farm as their last request. You decide to show up and take it over only to find it's run down and now you need to do whatever you can to make it thrive and prosper. That's pretty much the story, along with a bunch of side stuff that characters give you, again, like Stardew Valley. So as always, we're gonna go into the good and the bad, followed by my final thoughts, alright? Okay, so up first for the positives is the graphics and the art style. Now, I really like the art style that they're using here. I mean, it's a bit goofy and cartoony, but despite that, I'm still rather enjoying the look of it. It fits the theme and the idea of gameplay and story and everything they were going for. Despite its cartoony nature, it also has a good amount of attention to detail, good color contrast, and decent enough lighting. Next up for the positives is the sound effects and the music, which are on point. When you hear them, they sound as you'd expect, so that's a plus. My only complaint is while the game does have some ambiance, it's rather rare, and for the most part, you're pretty much listening to nothing, or that western music, so it's okay. Not bad, which is why it's in the positives, but you know, it's just okay. The price is a great deal as well. Considering the fact that this game is co-op and pretty large, at least in my opinion it's pretty large, deciding to sell this game for only $12 is actually pretty awesome, and since most people will want to play this game with friends, let's say you choose to play with three friends, then its total is still less than a normal AAA game price. That's pretty awesome, and it's a game that would last you a pretty long time considering it's an open world survival style game, so that price tag is sweet. And that brings me to my last positive. The fact that this game is indeed co-op up to four players. This means if you wanted to play a kinda laid-back western survival game with some goofy action and stuff, then you could easily afford this for you and your three friends. Or less, if you aren't lucky enough to have more than one friend like me. I only have one friend, and I married her. Okay, so that's all I got to say positively about this game. Up next is the negatives, but before I go into that, let me inform you all about something concerning YouTube. Smaller YouTubers grow so slowly because the only way a video gets views is if it gets views. It is a horrible paradox. So the only way my channel grows is if more people watch. But more people can't even find the video if people aren't already watching it. So basically, if you want to support the growth of my channel, I need you to not only like and subscribe, but to also share my channel online. Okay? I'd really appreciate the assistance. Thank you. Now then, on to the negatives. So, the first negative for me is the gameplay. It's slow, it's annoying, even with a mule mount you find yourself taking forever to get anywhere, and there is no fast travel even in this massive world. Now maybe eventually you can unlock fast travel, but for this massive map, it's something I really wish was included in the beginning. Another negative about the gameplay is the combat. It's imbalanced. The enemies that you in find yourself running into, like bandits, they don't run out of ammo. Their weapons never break, but yours do, and you will constantly find yourself running out of ammo, and you're also going to constantly find yourself using two to three slingshots just to kill a single bandit. So I hope you brought a lot of extra materials. And this is early on, beginning of the game quest. I fought three bandits to save a horse for some guy, used up a dozen slingshots to do it because they kept breaking way too fast and not doing enough damage. And they had slingshots too, by the way, they didn't have guns. And the slingshot is the only weapon you get early game. That doesn't include the wild animals you could find yourself fighting like coyotes or snakes. It's frustrating. And the last big annoyance with the gameplay is the quests with no quest markers. If you're going to make a massive map like this with slow travel speeds and whatnot, then at the very least you gotta give me some kind of freaking quest markers so I at least know where I'm going. I spent the entire hour and a half playing looking for some guy to teach me how to make a bow and arrow but I couldn't find him. On a mountain to the south you say. Well, is it this one? No. Is it that one? No. Is it this one? Nope. I give up. I quit. That's the gameplay you get to look forward to. Oh, and I almost forgot the crafting. Well, it's not a horrible design, but it does need a few tweaks. For instance, no real shortcuts to switch pages between different types of crafting stations, or the inability to craft multiple items despite having enough resources or space in your backpack. You have to craft everything one at a time. Then you've got the lack of storage, the lack of being able to build storage devices, and the limited storage space in the beginning. I mean, when you think of an open world survival game, what is the first few things you can always craft, right? Everybody should know this if you play survival games. The first few things that you can craft. Campfire, right? That's so you can cook your food. Some sort of bedroll, which by the way, you have to complete a quest to unlock that here in this game. You don't start out with that, but a bedroll for you to sleep on. 
and then storage boxes, you know, places where you can store all the crafting stuff that you're going to be gathering so that way you can build and, 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 and build up stuff, build a base or repair a farm or something. Even Stardew Valley had stuff like that. Even if they were small boxes, you could still build them and other survival games allow you to do that as well. But in this game, I don't know where they are or, or how to get them or why. And even the box, the storage box that it does give you is really small. Like, I don't understand. It's supposed to be a survival crafting game where you're rebuilding a farm so where's the storage boxes basically there's a lot of things wrong with the gameplay but on the bright side a lot of these seem pretty fixable because the game is in early access so all we can do is hope that a lot of these gameplay components get fixed the next negative i have here is kind of a it's me personally, I have a personal problem with its controls. It's a little bit awkward. You have to use E to pick up items after you destroy them, right? Now, a lot of survival games will have you move to something and hit E to collect it, right? But here you're also using WASD and you have to pixel perfect line up your character to grab the items, which makes gathering awkward and annoying. Why can't they just zip into my backpack like my time at Porsche? Why can't they just go into my backpack as I chop or smash like Rust? I mean, it's not a big deal, but it really is annoying when the resources are scattered about in front of you and you have to run over, stop, pick up that one item, run over, stop, pick up that item. And you have to do that over and over again because you need large amounts of these items to craft anything. It's almost like everything in this game is designed to just take more and more time when I'm trying to progress and build things and see what else the game has to offer. I can't do that in a timely manner. I can't do that in a comfortable manner when everything designed is just awkward. Everything with crafting and gathering is just awkward for a crafting gathering game. So basically the speed of the game is just a bit off overall as well. It takes too long to sleep, too long to cook, too long to craft, to fight, to travel, to talk, to do anything. It just all of it takes a little bit longer than you would expect or that you would want it to, which makes the whole game feel more like a slog. And last but not least is the lack of options menus. They're limited and the game won't even let you remap button control commands. Now that's a minor one for me. I don't really, that one doesn't bother me too much, but I do know there are a lot of people out there that would be bothered by something like this and might find it a little bit more frustrating. But that's all I got for the negatives. Honestly, if I, if I just take out my own personal gripes, this game has got some amazing potential. It's not really for me. You know, it just seems like right now in the game's current state, everything that annoys me in video games is everywhere in this game. So all I do is find this game annoying. I like ease of access. I like streamlining. I like comfortable, easy to maneuver at a speedy rate kind of management and controls. And that's just not here. When I play video games, I want to relax and have fun. If I want to play a stressful or an annoying video game, I'll play something like Elden Ring. All right, that's not what I'm trying to play here. However, considering all the things that this game does right, I can't give it a bad review or a negative recommendation. I personally was a little bored and annoyed, but technically when I looked back at the pros and cons, the game doesn't really fail in a lot of aspects. And you gotta remember it is early access, which means a lot of my complaints will probably get fixed. And when that happens, it could end up being a really fun, goofy survival game to play with friends. However, I would not recommend playing it by yourself. It just feels like it was designed to be played with others and playing it by yourself makes it a little too much of a chore. So if you got a friend or two and you guys are looking for a new survival game kind of thing to play together and don't care if it takes place in the Western or not, then yeah, I highly encourage you to check out this game. If you're even a little bit interested, like I said, it's got a good baseline. It's got good potential. It feels like it would be a safe investment. I would still encourage you to check out this game, even if you're playing it alone. I know what I just said, but even so. But if anything you heard here or saw here doesn't really feel like your cup of tea, then you're not going to miss anything by moving on, especially now that my time at Sandrock is fully released, also with multiplayer. So, it's honestly up to you guys. I think it's a perfectly average game considering it's early access. It's a pretty stable and safe investment. If this looks fun for you and your friends, then, you know, check it out. Alright, everybody? Alright, so that's all the time I got for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, please let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I can't wait to see you all again on my next adventure. So, until then, I bid you all farewell.